Wow! Hey guys, and welcome back to another Lost Bits video right here on Tetra Bay Gaming, the series where we explore the unused, altered, and unseen content in gaming. I honestly can't believe it's been almost six years since I made my original Baldi's Basics Lost Bits video, which I think was one of the first Lost Bits I made to really pop off back in the day. And now, with the original classic version of the game getting a remaster in late 2022, here we are with yet another revisit. We got some unused graphics, sounds, and more. So with all that said, slap the like button below with the ruler. It's time to find some Baldi's Basics classic remastered lost bits. All right, so first up, in my first video on the original release of this game, I went over an unused voice line from the game's principle of the thing. No stabbing people with pencils in the halls. Now, at the time, I speculated that this was associated with a scrapped item that would allow the player to stab some of the other idiots in the halls to keep them away, but it turns out that this is actually a remnant from another character that ended up being scrapped from the game. And this character would have been simply known as Pencil Boy, go figure, and apparently his mechanic would have been that he'd roam around the hallways and try to stab the player with some pencils that would presumably damage or at least stun the player in some way. And if the principal saw this happening, this unused line would have, well, been used, and he'd actually take Pencil Boy to detention instead of the player. Now apparently the idea for this Pencil Boy character also came from a real-life experience the game's developer, Mistman12, had while going to the dentist, where there, an unsupervised child had actually stabbed him multiple times with a pencil. And although Mistman12 believed that the inclusion of this Pencil Boy would have made the game funnier, realizing that this enemy could be too annoying for players and due to not having a good idea of how to implement the character's behavior, the decision was ultimately made to scrap the character entirely, and there have been no plans to include this Pencil Boy in the classic version or Baldi's Basics Plus since. Then furthermore, what's extra interesting about this unused principal line is that it also has an unused caption dialogue text string associated for it that seems to be a little nod to data miners going through the game's code. It reads, no stabbing people with unused dialogue in the halls. Like I said, a cool little nod to those looking through the game's data. Then next up, also related to the principle of the thing, are a pair of unused lines as well as their associated caption texts that seem to be leftovers from Baldi's Basics Plus. No being in school after hours in the halls. No looking in other people's lockers in the halls. Hiding in the lockers and being in the school after hours are things only seen in Baldi's Basics Plus, and since you can't enter the lockers or visit the school after hours in this game, well, these never do get used. Next, there are more bits of caption text left over in Classic Remastered, again from Baldi's Basics Plus, and these include references to the grappling hook item, as well as wholesome party music. Now, as a bit of a found bit section, in my first video on this game, I also covered how there were unused sound effects for playtime counting up to 10 jumps in her minigame. Jump rope in times in a row. Five, six, seven, eight. Nine, and for the longest time, these weren't ever used. That is, up until this more recent remaster of the classic game, where there, in the hard mode setting, these have now finally been implemented. And if you like unused sound files of numbers being recited, boy, do I have some good news for you, as there's also some unused audio files for Mrs. Pomp from Baldi's Basics Plus left over here in the classic remaster, specifically some of her counting down the minutes you have left to reach her classroom. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. And interestingly, even in Baldi's Basics Plus, where she is used, she only ever counts down from two, as the time limit to reach her classroom is never more than two minutes. So either there were once plans for the time limit to be longer than two minutes, or the idea was tossed around for her to count down the final nine seconds of the time limit or something. And then, in addition to those, there are also a few more leftover sound effects for her, too. Check your map to see where my class is. Class dismissed. Just in time. Minutes. Minutes left. Time's up. You there. Just reminding you to be at my class in...
What's extra interesting, though, is that not only are there quite a few leftover graphics for Mrs. Pomp left in the game as well, including this one for her profile description, but she can actually also still be re-enabled in Classic Remastered here via a bit of modding, revealing that she was pretty much ready to go for this game as she's basically fully functional here. Now at first, I thought that perhaps she was once intended to have been added to the demo style in this game, but according to Mistman, he never actually intended to add her as there's no map in this game to see which classroom she'd run off to, and he deemed that the school wouldn't have been a good fit for her since it wasn't randomized and relatively small. And lastly for some unused audio here, there's also a test sound which had the purpose of being used for testing Baldi's lip syncing in the You Can Think pad. It's, uh, basically just a really long beep, so nothing too exciting, unfortunately, unless, of course, you happen to be a big beep fan. Then, although not unused or anything, as a small aside here, in my previous video, I went over a sound effect recorded by Mistman that went unused. Can the parrot sound like me? <laughs> and interestingly, there's a little easter egg reference to this that can be found on this board graphic in the Shrink Machine room, where we can see a post-it note with, Can the parrot sound like me? written on it. Pretty cool. Then, in addition to the leftover graphics of Mrs. Pomp that aren't normally used, there are a few more unused test graphics, including this blue background and this grid, both of which were used for testing user interface graphics, there's a basic placeholder item graphic, which was also left over unused in the original release of the game. There's this light map graphic, and then this Atlas test graphic, which is kind of used, and we'll get back to that in a bit. Then next, although this graphic of Farmer Baldi is seen in the promotional pages for Baldi's Basics Plus in this game, there's actually a whole sprite sheet left over for him in the files too, and I don't think any of these are used besides the one in the promo page. Then next, there are some unused white number graphics ranging from 4 to 9. Now 0 through 3 of these numbers are used in the game in the hard mode of demo style as they'll float in front of the math machines indicating how many questions you have gone correct out of 3 on that given machine. Now I had no clue what the rest of these numbers could have been for though, so I reached out to Mistman for some answers. And according to him, these were once planned to be used for the bonus math questions that you can do on these same machines after you get all seven notebooks. Apparently, these would have similarly popped up and floated in front of the machines after the player completed one of the bonus questions, and this would indicate how many questions were completed out of the six that you need in order to unlock a portal poster. Now, that would only account for the numbers up to 6, so additionally, Mistman told me that the rest of these numbers were also considered for use for the battle against Null as part of an on-screen timer. Now next up, Mistman12 actually also shared a couple of early, now unused graphics with me as well. The first of these is an early game launcher and title screen graphic made up for Classic Remastered that still has the original In Education and Learning subtitle. According to Mistman, this was planned on being the title screen graphic right up until the game was submitted for being listed on Steam, and only a small graphic of the version number would indicate that this was indeed the remastered version of the original. Now apparently, Valve didn't approve this as they deemed it inconsistent with the remaster's title, so Mistman had to change the game launcher and title screen graphics to what they are now in order to get Valve to accept the build on Steam. Then Mistman also shared two more images with me, an early version of the texture of Baldi crying that's seen in the secret debug room which we'll come back to later in this video, as well as an early version of the windscreen for the party style mode in the game. The reason for this windscreen being altered is pretty simple, Mistman just felt that having this as a still image was a bit too basic. Yeah, too basic for basically games. So yeah, eventually instead, he opted to pull from existing assets in the game to create the more dynamic end screen that's seen in the ending of the party mode. And lastly for the graphics, although not unused itself, there's actually some text hidden on the clipboard graphic that's used for the fun setting section when starting up a game. When looking at the raw sprite of this clipboard, we can see a howdy hidden down here on the bottom left. Yet another little wink to people digging a bit deeper into the game. I love seeing stuff like this when working on these videos. 
Now, moving on, I covered some of these in a short I made a while ago, but let's dive a bit deeper into some of the secret codes that you can plop into the game's You Can Think pad, each which grant a pretty cool effect. First up, the code 11211994 will enable a chaos mode in the game. And basically, this will make the game much more difficult as this will enable random events. And additionally, all the NPCs in the map will be duplicated as well. So if you want an extra, extra challenge, then this chaos mode may be right up your alley. The next code is 10181996, and this one's pretty cool as it'll enable a authentic mode. And this will change the game's controls and interface to even more so resemble an educational game that was made in the 1990s. The actual gameplay screen is reduced to a much smaller size as we now have a quite obtrusive border around it. Baldi's head is now on a nice little monitor on the bottom right here, the inventory section is different, and no longer can you just hold the shift key to sprint, as you'll now actually have to toggle this little switch here above the staminometer in order to enable or disable sprinting. Now this authentic mode is a fun little novelty, but I definitely don't see myself actually ever trying to beat this game with this mode enabled. I have a hard enough time beating the game normally as it is. Then next, the code 04281989 will actually bring the player to a sound test room, and here you can not only listen to a bunch of the game's music tracks, But there are also some switches that allow you to alter the speed of the music or even change the pitch as well. It's not the most interesting debug or test room we've come across on this series, but it's still pretty cool to mess around with nonetheless. And then lastly for these codes, arguably the best one, is 09241993, and this one enables a debug menu for the game. Now in the initial launch version of this game, you could use this code right away. But in the most current patch, you actually have to complete the Null Style mode, which you only unlock after completing any of the game's modes with the first three fun settings enabled, and unlocking each of these fun settings themselves requires you to beat the three game modes once, so it's quite the task to unlock this now. And if you do try to enter in this code before doing these unlock requirements, the You Can Think pad will just give you a message telling you to find all the secrets first before then instantly kicking you back out to the title screen. Anyways though, once you do finally unlock the ability to actually use this code, once starting up a new game, after pausing, you'll now notice a small little question mark in the top right that wasn't there before. And clicking this question mark reveals a cool debug menu where you can toggle super speed, which obviously lets you run around much faster, Invincibility, which prevents Baldi from smacking you around with his ruler, but unfortunately though, the others will still bother you with this enabled. You can give yourself pretty much any item in the game that you desire, and then lastly, my favorite, you can toggle a no-clip mode on or off, so you can zip through the walls to your heart's content. An awesome way of exploring the game in a new way, or just a nice method of quickly escaping someone chasing you around in the halls. What's extra cool though is that all of these codes actually have significance, and if they seemed like dates to you, you'd be correct. As similar to something like some of the cheat codes used in some classic Sonic games, I asked Mistman12 and each of these codes does actually correspond to a specific video game release date. This one is November 21st, 1994, the release date of Donkey Kong Country for the Super Nintendo. This one, April 28th, 1989, the release date of Black Knight 2000, which is a pinball game that's apparently known for some great music and sound. I was curious and hell yeah, the music in this game absolutely slaps. Then next, this one is October 18th, 1996, and this is actually the release date of Sonic's Schoolhouse, which if you didn't already know, was a massive inspiration for Baldi's Basics. And then lastly, the debug code is September 24th, 1993, and this is the original release date of the game Mist. And the reason this one was chosen for the debug mode is simply for the fact that Mist Man has the title in his name, and him being the main developer and all. So yeah, in case you were curious what the nature of these codes was, there you have it. And now, last up for this video, there are a few secret rooms found out of normal bounds in the game. The first two of these rooms are found only in the demo style mode of this map. So first we have 
this room, known as the Non-Canon Connor Room, and yeah, let me introduce you to Non-Canon Connor, who of course has his mug plastered all over this room's walls, as well as on this rotating sphere model in the middle here. And that's really about it for this room, it's just... yeah. And although I used it initially, you actually don't need noclip enabled to enter this room either, as you can also hop into it by placing a portal poster item, which you can get in this mode after answering all of the bonus math questions, onto the wall just beside this B-Soda machine here. Then secondly for this area, there's a hidden room just between this classroom with the everyone gets detention message, as well as this staff room with the janitors must wear boots poster. And if we plop a portal poster just to the left of it, we can enter this secret room and meet Bladder here, basically a bootleg version of Baldi. This room also contains a pair of chalkboard messages, the first, what appears to be the title of Bladder's game, Bladder's Simples in Education School Scary Grandma Game. Yeah. And then the other one is a message from Bladder himself. Don't end up like me. If you make bootleg Baldi games, you'll be trapped in the walls of here school forever. So yeah, this secret is a little dig at those that developed bootleg versions of Baldi's basics and threw it up on places like the Google Play Store. I'm sure it's a curse for many indie games that pop off. Chances are you'll have a bootleg version plopped up in a matter of time. Anyways, another cool little secret, and it's nice to meet Bladder here. And then lastly, there's another secret room hidden in the glitched school that's super colorful, as we can see the blue C, red F, and green tiles that we saw earlier, with C standing for ceiling and F standing for floor. Here we can also find an updated version of the crying baldy texture that I also brought up earlier. There's not really much else to this room, so I'm assuming there's some sort of meta lore meaning to Baldi being trapped in a room of test textures. We can also see some of these test textures, not really hidden or anything, but as part of like a mini room found inside of another one of the classrooms here in the glitched school, where we can see the ceiling and floor tiles as well as green ones apparently facing north, south, east, and west. Anyways, you can either enter this room with a portal poster, which you'll still need the debug menu to get here, no clip of course, or if you get to the end of the party mode where all of the glitched out baldies start flying all over the place and deleting parts of the map, eventually one of them will delete enough of the walls and then you can just walk through the void to enter this room that way too, though you won't be able to appreciate it for as long as you want as more and more of the map will get deleted before you ultimately get the windscreen. And my friends, that's about it for Baldi's Basics Classic Remastered here, and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, check out some of my other Lost Bits videos, and be sure to subscribe to the channel to find your way back here in the future. And if you would like to see me cover Baldi's Basics Plus at some point, maybe when the full game is released, let me know down in the comments. And as always, thank you all so much for stopping by today, and I will see you in a bit.